Hi guys, it's Tara and welcome back to Crafting with Curly Cues. Today I have a fabulous fall project for you featuring Gerda Steiner designs and a little bit of no line watercoloring. So I'm going to start with some Tim Holtz Distress watercolor cardstock and the Happy Fall and Cheerful Hedgehogs stamp sets from Gerda Steiner designs. So these sets are fall time perfection and as I promised in my last Curly Q&A video, I am going to fall all over <laughs> September. Like I'm so excited about fall stamping and crafting so yay so to start with my no line watercoloring here i have stamped my hedgehog on some watercolor cardstock using antique linen distress ink this is my favorite ink to use when i'm doing no line watercoloring because it's dark enough for me to be able to see my image but light enough that i can make it just kind of disappear as i'm working with the image and give it that no line look so you could probably use any light um, ink that you have if you're going to be doing water coloring obviously with your no line you want something that is going to be water soluble so that it will kind of dissolve with the um, with the coloring or something that's at least waterproof so you don't get any weird smearing or anything but um, I like to just use distress inks because I do a lot of my water coloring with distress inks anyway so it just works out well for me so as you saw I started with a distress marker which I actually have not busted out in like ages so I decided to go ahead and get those out and I honestly I I rarely use them as markers I kind of as you can see I scribbled a little bit of it on my craft mat and I'm using a paintbrush to apply it I did put a little bit directly on the paper but I just feel like I have my more control this way and as you guys know I'm like a total control freak so this is how I prefer to do it so I basically just put down a bunch of color right by where I want the shadows to be the darkest and then I'm just gonna go through and start blending that out with my water brush so this is a really super cheap paintbrush it's not anything fancy I believe it's a size zero um, if you're interested in that but I I don't really pay attention to that kind of stuff so um, I mean I just try not to stress about it like it's just super fun for me to watercolor so I the thing I like a lot about watercolor is that I feel like you can't because if you mess up you can just kind of add more water and blend it out it makes me feel like there's this kind of security blanket when I'm doing something like this because I know that like okay if I mess it up too bad I'll just apply more water blend it out and essentially just like start over <laughs> So I always think that's pretty nice. So for his little body here, I only used one color of Distress Ink for his kind of spiny back part, and I believe it was um, Gathered Twigs. And just by blending it out, I was able to get some really good different shades. For his little body, I started with some old paper and just kind of put down a base layer and um, a really nice light base layer. And then I'm using tea dye to go back over and add some depth in some of the shadows. And it really helps once you put back in, like, like the little eyeball. Um, I mean, this little hedgie is super excited and his little eye is squished closed because he's just giddy with joy at the jumping in the leaves. But once you put that back in, it really starts to come to life. So you can totally see that once you play with it and you kind of hit all the lines, it totally looks super fun. And the thing I like about no line watercoloring is I always think it looks like a children's book, like a children's book illustration. I don't know, I just think it's super fun and it's something that's that's really fun to do. I think that you could do no line watercoloring and make actual like art again for like a nursery would be cool or um, something like that. So it's just a fun technique that is different and you get a completely different look than I feel like you get with any other kind of coloring. So it's fun to bust out every now and again. And I wanted this card to be just a really soft fall card. So I thought no line watercoloring was perfect. So I stamped this little pile of leaves that comes in the Cheerful Hedgehog set and I stamped it in the Aged Mahogany Distress Ink and then I just went over it with some fall colors and then applied a little bit of darker Aged Mahogany to a couple leaves. I really want it to be nice and loose. I'm not stressed about it being perfect. As you can see, I'm going to do an ink smushy background, which proves how not concerned with perfect I am. <laughs> so to do my ink smushing I took the piece of plastic that comes right off your stamp set like there's always that extra piece of plastic that you peel off the back of the stamps and I'm using that to do my smushing so I'm just applying my distress inks directly to the plastic and then I spritz a little bit of water on there to get that ink moving around and then I'm just going to smush it on that watercolor paper and put it where I want it and then hit it with my heat tool. I like to hit with the heat tool in between each color layer because that way the color sits on top of the color that's below it and kind of makes layers and adds depth 
as opposed to mixing in with the other color. So the aged mahogany, the red, I wanted to go a little lighter because it's significantly darker than the other colors. And so I just put it on kind of the square of that plastic so that I had a little bit more control while I was dabbing it. So I kind of feel like I hit the fall color trifecta gold here with this color combo. I've got aged mahogany, rusty hinge, and fossilized amber, and I absolutely love it. And when you pair it with this piece of pattern paper from that Echo Park 6x6 paper pad that I just showed you, it is amazing, and I'm super stoked about it. <laughs> So I fussy cut out my hedgehog and that little pile of leaves that I created and now I'm kind of figuring out where they're going to sit on this pattern and I'm taking some of the leaf images from both of those stamp sets, the Cheerful Hedgehogs and the Happy Fall and I am just stamping some leaves in the same distress ink colors that I did the ink smushing in in the background because again I want everything to kind of blend in like I don't want any like black outlines or anything like that. So I'm putting some of those leaves in there because essentially what I'm going for is I want it to look like this hedgehog is falling in this leaf pile like slow motion and there's just leaves poofing up everywhere. Just a crazy insane amount of leaves and fall time flowing around him. So <laughs> that's my goal. So I'm taking now my aged mahogany distress marker and my paintbrush and I am just filling in some of those leaves that I just stamped. So I'm doing this directly on top of the other color. I'm not super stressed about if things blend really well or whatever. I just kind of want some of these leaves to stand out a little bit from the background so that you can clearly see that that is what's happening, is that there are leaves floating around. Um, I'm going to use some of the rusty hinge as well. The fossilized amber I felt like was going to be a little bit too light, so I didn't go back in and color any leaves in with that one. But I use those two darker shades to go ahead and color some of those leaves in so that the hedgy is not just, you know, floating in the swirly colors. There's actually some leaves there and you get that impression that everything is just leaves floating around. I just, I don't know, I think it's fun. It makes me want to go jump in a pile of leaves. I just love fall. Fall makes me want to be a kid. <laughs> I had my first pumpkin spice latte the other day. I was pretty excited. Um, I'm going to be starting a fitness kind of competition challenge with my sister's um, new in-laws. She got married in April, and so her new in-laws do this really intense, like, 10-week fitness thing. So I'm going to be starting that next week. So I had to get a pumpkin spice latte in before that starts. So <laughs> I was pretty stoked. So now I wanted some sparkle on this card. So I took my Copper Perfect Pearls, put a little bit on my craft mat, and added just a little bit of water. And then I put my paintbrush in there and spritzed that around just like I did with the aged mahogany ink to add some splatter to this. So unfortunately on camera, it's hard to see how incredible this looks, but in real life, like this adds so much shimmer and this copper color is gorgeous. And I was so obsessed with the way that it looked that I decided to add the copper perfect pearls to mm, basically everything. So this red piece of paper I have, I had cut down just to provide a little bit of a border around my watercolor piece before I put it on my pattern paper and I decided that it needed to be copper. So I smushed that perfect medium, which is basically like a VersaFine sticky ink, all over the edges of that red cardstock and then put that perfect pearls right over the top and oh my gosh, so sparkly and amazing. So then I'm like, okay, well let's do my sentiment in perfect pearls because <laughs> I just couldn't stop using it. So basically stamped it in the perfect medium, which is again VersaFine, and then brushed that right over the top, and I was able to wipe away the excess with my paper towel, and you get coppery fall time perfection on top of everything else. This The copper Perfect Pearls is the perfect fall color. I'm like kind of bummed at myself that I haven't used this color before for fall time projects because it's so great. So if you've never used Perfect Pearls before, they're super easy to use. You just use some sort of sticky ink and then you use the really soft um, paintbrush and usually Perfect Pearls comes with one, but if you, know, if you get a single Perfect Pearls, just any soft paintbrush will work as long as it's not wet at all. And you just gently brush it over the top and it will stick to that sticky ink and then you can kind of dust away anything excess um, 
and you're left with this really beautiful shimmer on just the area that you stamped. It's phenomenal. So I popped up the little pile of leaves at the little hedgy and put a little bit of twine around that front panel. And that is it. This card is all done. So there's a nice close-up of hedgy jumping in all his leaves. I think he's just having a fall time blast. There's some of that beautiful copper shimmer. Ugh, so pretty. So pretty. So thank you guys so much for watching. All the supplies that I used are listed below and over at my blog. If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe and leave me a comment. I love hearing from you guys. And don't forget to check out the description box below to join Gerda Steiner Designs or me on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. Thanks guys. Bye.